This video was partially inspired by Michael Penn's video on a clever way to define the natural logarithm. Primarily, there are two types of calculus textbooks utilized across the world now, them being early and late transcendentals, which as the title implies, will be the subject of this video. The terms are roughly defined by when they introduce numbers such as e and pi, which are non-algebraic, or rather transcendental numbers, hence the name, into the text. Examples of such texts include the widely acclaimed Calculus Early Transcendentals by James Stewart and Calculus Late Transcendentals by Anton, Bivens, and Davis. For the purposes of this video, let's partition our definition of calculus down to limits, derivatives, integrals, and infinite series. Although differential equations are also typically classified under a calculus course, they extend fairly naturally from the aforementioned concepts and are therefore not under today's scope. To provide some historical context, late transcendentals was the standard way of teaching calculus dating back to the 17th century, but early transcendentals is fairly recent, only going back a couple of decades. Although the styling indicates the only differences are well transcendental functions, there exist significant differences in terms of explanation and syllabus order, even though both typically cover the same topics. It stands to reason, then, that most late transcendental books are fairly antiquated, while early transcendental calculus books are still being published to this day. Let's first look at how the differences in defining the logarithm stretch between the two topics. Late transcendentals defines the natural log of x to be the integral of 1 to x of 1 over t dt. This is reminiscent of other functions such as trigonometric integrals, six, and the like, given how something unintegrable is then integrated via a definition. Naturally, this means that logarithms are left until after integrals, given that a logarithm is, for all intents and purposes, the result of an integral. Early transcendentals takes a less rigorous approach to this and starts off by defining the notion of inverse functions, such as the inverse of the square root of x being x squared from 0 to infinity as its domain. Typically, a definition follows that there exists some real number e, such that when you differentiate e raised to x, you get e raised to the x. Or rather, when you differentiate e to the x and evaluate it at x equals to 0, you get 1. By the notion of an inverse function, there must exist some f of x, such as the f of e raised to the x equals to x, and this directly leads to the definition of the natural log of x, or rather ln x, as the inverse of e to the x. One might immediately think the second definition is more natural, which is expected given how most United States and United Kingdom-based institutions teach from early transcendentals, while the first definition is more of an afterthought to instill mathematical rigor after students grasp a basic understanding of integrals. Now, a step forward into the differences of defining the properties of the logarithm. As expected, there are some fairly different approaches to such things. In late transcendentals, a typical result such as ln of x times y equals to ln x plus ln y is proven by means of u substitution into the integral definition, which can be demonstrated as follows. Suppose ln of x times y equals the integral of 1 to x times 1 of the function 1 over t dt. This can be split into the integral of 1 to x of 1 over t dt plus the integral from x to x times y of 1 over t dt. Then by providing a substitution t equals to xv where v is an arbitrary variable, this naturally arises that dt equals to x dv and v equals to t over x. This changes our second integral from the integral of 1 to x times y of 1 over t dt to the integral of 1 to y of 1 over x times v multiplied by x times dv. And that just cancels out to give us the integral of 1 to y of 1 over v dv, which then when we simplify all of it, we get ln of x plus ln of y. It's a rather simple result to prove, but when compared to the early transcendentals version, it seems incredibly convoluted. It's natural to follow from the definition of ln x when considering early transcendentals being the inverse of e to the x, and as such, we can use exponential properties to directly prove the logarithmic properties as the exponential properties arise naturally from the axioms of real numbers. 
Following with the concepts of understanding before mathematical rigor, modern books also tend to introduce calculus in the order of limits, then derivatives, then the concept of integration as anti-differentiation, and then so-called pure integration. Late transcendental books tend to follow a more abstract, at least to us, order, with a lot of older books doing integral functions, then limits, then derivatives, and then the concept of integration as anti-differentiation. It's also important to note that a significant portion of pre-calculus content, as the name implies, is taught before calculus in a modern mathematical context, but is left until after integration in some late transcendental textbooks from the 18th to 19th century. A disclaimer needs to be said here though, before I overgeneralize late transcendentals further. Modern late transcendental books, such as the one I mentioned earlier by Anton and Friends, follows an incredibly similar format to early transcendentals. In fact, the order should be reversed in the sense that early transcendentals naturally follows a close format from modern late transcendental books, except with a swapping of when the transcendental functions are introduced. What I referenced earlier is mostly a remnant of more antique calculus textbooks, which are not seen nowadays. The contents before this are mainly factual, and what follows is mostly my personal opinion on this matter. As mathematics grows increasingly more friendly to understand, introducing the notion of an arbitrary inverse is as confusing to new students as an arbitrary integral result. Students on both sides will eventually face some semblance of mathematical confusion when first meeting arbitrary results that cannot be determined in terms of regular functions, now, although in a university context, that's perfectly fine because we're introducing these things all the time in proof-based courses and linear algebra and analysis, etc. But in the context of high school and sixth form mathematics, it tells a different story. One might argue that e raised to the power of a non-integer number is as unintuitive as logarithms, given that it's something that we can't clearly compute ourselves and we don't have a clear answer to, but it's something that one grows up with and the integers sets so-called boundaries for the values of E given its monotonic increasing nature. It provides a solid ground for new learners to stand on, especially with the heavy play calculators have in modern education. For late transcendental students, an introduction to integral definitions earlier could cause more intuitive understanding for the underlying factors behind calculus, as well as infinite series and the Riemannian integral as summation. For early transcendental students, the logic of logarithms as inverses provides a much more concrete understanding of functions and maps in general given how widely logarithms are used, and provides a jumping pad for teaching the basis of things such as domain and composites in the context of functions. I recognize that I may be putting too much personal weight behind the impact of when and how an irrational, unintuitive segment of mathematics is introduced, but I strongly believe that how mathematics perceive these topics is fundamental to actually developing an interest to mathematics as a whole. Early transcendentals is far more suited for the general audience, and how even for physics or biology majors, they probably would rather take early transcendentals as well. But if one was a dedicated scholar focusing on pursuing a math-related degree, I believe late transcendentals has its merits and should be considered. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching.